You are listening to the Urban Sports Scene with myself, Bole, and Ray Jeezy. Will T is out, and you know we part of Empire Media. This is a this is basically breaking news. We started, we're doing a new show. My man, Troy Holliburton is on this show from Washington City Paper. He's the Washington Wizards reporter. Hey, Troy, what's good, my man? My brothers, how y'all doing today? I'm glad to be on this show. Look, I, I'm not going to get too celebratory because, you know, as a member of the media, you got to be impartial. Yeah. But let's just say that the, the Wizards organization made it made a right decision today. Is that if y'all don't know, the Wizards and Scott Brooks have part, have part ways. So now the Wizards are basically hunting for a new coach. Ray, how you feeling, my man? Well... I, I know what Troy just said, but I ain't gonna lie. I'm a Wizards fan. I'm just being, I'm just being honest. Um, I'm gonna keep it 100 with you. I'm, I'm a Wizards fan, and I'm excited about the move. Nothing personal to Scott. I said we should go with Kareem to join us. Scott was a good interview for me as, as a coach, man. Much better mm. than his predecessor. You know, I mean, not his predecessor. Y'all know what I mean. Brady, man, I'm, just, I'm just gonna put it out there. <laughs> I, I, I enjoy talking to Scott. However. It's a good look. I'm putting my tribute video together for Scott right now. Oh, if y'all want to? If y'all want to put it on that, please do so. Yeah. You know, so hey, hey, Chris Brown said deuces. Y'all, y'all heard what we started <laughs> with, man. So basically, deuces. I'm not a again. We are. I'm not a Wizards. I'm a Lakers fan, but you know, I do root for the home team. And Troy know how I feel about Scott Brooks, man. Why? I don't. I don't want to go hard. And y'all know how I feel about Scott Brooks as a coach. Um, he's a good. He's a nice guy, though. That's how. Like, he's a nice guy. I like to use that terminology. He's a nice guy. You know what I'm saying? I think that Scott Brooks is a great guy. You yeah. Know, he's a great mm-hmm. guy. He's a, uh, he's a leader of men. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he, he knows how to get his, his coaching staff and his players organized. He proved that he didn't really know much about X's and O's and making adjustments yeah. in game. And that's just, it that's, just is what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's fa- straight facts, man. Hey, um, yeah. So our empire, uh, again, we're on empire media, uh, empire media hosts, multiple DMVs, podcast shows such as the John Com Report hosted by ESPN Washington Football Team Insider John Com and Jones Football hosted by USA Today Insider Mike Jones. You can also subscribe to our podcast on Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, uh, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and Google Podcasts. Just search the Urban Sports Scene. Ray, you ain't gonna do this read, man. You ain't gonna do this read, Ray. Oh, my bad. <laughs> This show can be found on podcast <laughs> DC, the new local app with hundreds of options of, in local news, health, and of the DMV region. Download the podcast DC app to hear all the Empire shows as well as the other great content. I didn't realize it until just a minute ago. It's okay, bro. No, I got you, my man. I got you. Hey, don't forget to tweet us at Urban Sports C to hit us up on our Urban Sports C Facebook page. No, also, join our Urban Sports C Facebook group. Search Urban Sports C, sports, po- sports bloggers, sports podcasters, and sports debates. All right, man, let's get right into it. So, Troy, when you heard the news about Scott Brooks and the Wizards parting ways, what, what came to mind? Uh, first thing that came to mind was, well, I think that once we, once I started looking at like kind of the details as to how they parted ways and you started uh-huh. reading uh, Woj's report about him saying that, you know, that they, that the, 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 the contract negotiations broke down um, and that they couldn't come to terms uh, on an agreement. The first thing that came to my mind was just thinking about like just the close knit relationship that Scott Brooks and Tommy Shepard had. And the close knit relationship that Scott Brooks had with so many different people within that organization. And I don't think it was ever their intention to kind of disrespect Scott Brooks in any way to just come Mm -hmm. out and say, you know what, you fire, you gone. So I think that what they did was, I mean, and this is like in classic hashtag so wizards fashion, (laughs) I believe what ended up happening was they offered him something that he, knowing that Scott Brooks is a prideful man, he's a smart, knowing that he was never going to accept. And so when they tried, when they started offering him stuff and, you know, tried telling him, you know, what coaches he could have on his staff. First of all, he already had one of the weakest um, assistant coaching benches in the entirety of the NBA. So that, that this should have been something they should have addressed two years ago. Uh-huh. So don't come, don't try to come to him now talking about, you know, they need to get more different assistant coaches in there. But I believe, I mean, don't cry any tears for Scott Brooks. He signed a five year, thirty five mm-hmm. million dollar contract which he saw all the way through. He got every dollar of that contract. I'm not going to shed any tears for him because he got paid. And mm-hmm. at the end of the day, he got paid. And if you look at, yes, they finished strong and they made the playoffs in, uh, this year. But if you look at the five-year tenure, it was largely a disappointment. 
Mm. So he, he had a, a his overall winning percentage is less than Randy Whitman. You know, he the, 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 the team didn't show any of the signs of improvement that they brought him in for. The, 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 the young players didn't show any of the signs of development that he was supposedly known, quote unquote, known for coming from OKC. So, you know, I think that I, I think that Scott Brooks, he did a valiant uh, job uh, this season and getting that team to the playoffs. But I don't think that he earned the right to come back. Troy, you already know Wizards Twitter is going off. I, I've seen you on there this morning. And we believe that the people, I said this last night, the people made that change when it came to Ernie Grunfeld. Do the people get credit for this, <laughs> this change? And how does this impact the Wizards fan base, which I feel like it reignited the Wizards fan base today because, I'm, I mean, people were serious. They were out. They were like, I'm done. If Scott's coming back, I'm, I'm out. Like, like, we talking about half the fan base, I swear. What do you think? I think that the people, I'm not going to say that the people, uh, I think the people had a much larger effect on getting Ernie Grunfeld out than they did on time. <laughs> I know for a fact that, you know, there were a lot of people when about Ernie Grunfeld. They said, look, I'm not renewing my season tickets if Ernie Grunfeld coming back. And then when he got fired, that, that next day, uh, Wizard ticket reps were calling people, hey, have you seen the news? Uh, Ernie, <laughs> Grunfeld, he said, Ernie Grunfeld, no, we don't know if he's coming back for the season. So I don't think it was to quite that extent, but I do believe that uh, that, that Ted Leonsis uh, and, and the rest of the ownership group, I, I do believe that they, they had a sense of not only what the Wizards fans were thinking, but they had to ask around some of their peers throughout the rest of the NBA. And, I, and to me, it was hard pressed to find anybody outside of the Wizards organization who thought that Scott Brooks did a good job over his five-year tenure. Hmm. So I think that when you start looking at, when you start evaluating all, when you start asking around the league, asking other personnel and asking different fan bases and act like, I don't, I don't, I just don't think that there was a conceivable way that they could in good faith say that they're trying to, you know, reach certain goals and bring him back as the coach. Absolutely. So Troy, obvious question now is where do we go from here? This franchise is building around Bradley Beal. That's the clear objective. I keep mentioning Sam Cassell for that reason. He was in this organization, former player, championship player. He has Baltimore DC ties. Who would your next choice for head coach be? Or give me some candidates. Sam Cassell would be on that short list. I think Sam Cassell is a good candidate. I think Chauncey Billups would be a very mm. strong candidate. You know, I think that, that he's a guy who has shown, um, you know, in his, in his brief time that, that he was on TV, he, he's very cerebral. And it's like, uh -huh. you there's certain guys, like when, when I remember, like when I used to watch Steve Kerr, like break down the game and talk about the game, I'm like, yo, this dude know what he's talking about. Uh -huh. You know, uh -huh. and I think Chauncey has a lot of that within him. And so I think that, Sam and Chauncey both would bring um, a little bit of cachet. And um, I think that they would automatically gain the trust and respect from Bradley Bill and Russell Westbrook. Now, mind you, Russell Westbrook is probably not going to be very happy that they let go of his BFF, uh, Scott Brooks. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, it would, it would definitely behoove the team to bring in a guy that, 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 that would gain the respect of Brad and Russ. But also I would look at a group of uh, younger assistant coaches. Like I would look at uh, uh, Wes, Un uh, Wes Unsell Jr., who is a defensive minded coach uh, out of the Denver Nuggets organization and who obviously has very close ties to the Wizards organization mm -hmm. uh, through his father, Wes. They still rock the, the 41 patch on, on their jerseys. Mm -hmm. I would look at a guy like uh, Jaron Collins, who was a, a, a top assistant for the Golden State Warriors, mm -hmm. who's a defensive minded coach. I think that, you know, the way that the Wizards have performed defensively over the last five years, that I think that needs to be a priority for this team. That they, they need to bring somebody. If you got Brad and Rush, you're going to score points. Yeah. But you need to bring somebody in here who's going to be able to put together a, a defensive scheme and, and, and allow this team to kind of flourish and, and not play just one type of way where they got to outscore people 145 to 140. So I think that those guys would be on the very short list right now. Uh, but I do believe that because Tommy Shepard has such strong and deep connections internationally and within like uh, the G League and different stuff like that, I guarantee you that he has a list of about, you know, four or five names of guys that we probably never heard of. Mm. You know, but he got it, but he, but guys that he's probably been looking at, X's and O's masters, 
But with, with it, then again, with, when you bring in a guy like that, you know, when you look at uh, what happened in Indiana with Nate Bjorken, you get an ex those guy, and he don't know how to relate to the players, man, they, gonna, they ain't going to respect him. He's going to be out of there. So I do believe that, you know, Tommy Shepard has a he, – he, he has a, a large task on his hand in deciding who the next head coach is going to be. Mm. Sure. How about a play, how about a coach like Kenny Atkinson, uh, who had good success, had success in uh, in Brooklyn, had had guys had guys who overachieve um, up in Brooklyn, had them playing hard uh, before they had Kyrie and had to change a little thing, they had to change uh, the whole environment. But how about a guy like that? Um, I think Kenny Atkinson would be a good coach for a. I think he would be a good option for mm. one of the five reopenings. Mm -hmm. I just don't see him as being a good fit in D.C. Now, okay. I have a hunch, and I would I would be willing to bet this. I bet that the next Wizards head coach is going to be a black person. I, I, mm. just, I, just, I, just, I just have a hunch as far as the organization and how they've been moving and how, mm. and how they ha have been, you know, really been stepping out in the forefront of a lot of these social justice movements okay. and how Ted has, Ted Leonsis has gone out of his way to kind of, you know, uh, make uh, monumental basketball one within the community. Mm. And so in order for, for him to do that and, and, and what is formerly Chocolate City, I just, I just think, I got a hunch. <laughs> like I said, this is not any reporting here. So don't, yeah. don't, 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 don't Ari Abraham me. <laughs> my, personal, my personal opinion, I think the next head coach of the Wizards is going to be a black person. So about Jason Kidd then? You mentioned, we talk, we're talking black folks about Jason I Kidd. I don't think Jay Kidd's a fit here. Okay. I, I just, it's just, it's just, it's too, brothers, much, it's too much. You said, you said light skin brothers? It's too much, it's too much, just too much baggage, too much stuff, like surrounding him. I just, Ted, yeah. Ted don't like that stuff. Like, that's like oh, you know what? That's true. Yeah. yeah. That's him. why, that's why Troy Weaver ain't here, correct? Yeah, because I mean, of some of that past some stuff. Say, some people say that. And, and look, and I know that Troy, was, he was a finalist candidate. For the Wizards job, and I know, look, he had a very long summer, uh, two summers ago, because he couldn't work or do anything while the mm. uh, Wizards process was still going on. So that he basically, while he was with Oklahoma City, he couldn't he couldn't interview for any other jobs. He couldn't be with the Thunder organization because he was in the process. So he, they, look, Troy, Troy Weaver, look, look, he want, he got a, he gonna have a nice conversation with with Ted next time he see him. He cost him some money, but. <laughs> <laughs> So, but yeah, so Ted, Ted don't deal with the baggage stuff. So I don't see Jason Kidd coming mm, in. Okay. So, so Troy is Tommy Shepard's job safe? I'm hearing that his job isn't even safe. So nah, he's Tommy Shepard's good. He signed under contract. He's, he's the GM of the team. He look. We asked him that at his last press conference. He said, "Oh, I'm under contract." So look, now he's good <laughs> to go. And I think that if anything, now I, I do think that there are other options that that could come to play. But Tommy Shepard's going to be safe as the general manager of the team. Now, uh, now, uh, they might, now they might go out and get a president of basketball operations. You know, you never know. But I think that Tommy Shepard's job as the general manager of the team is very safe. So are you, are you saying Masai? Or is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> We're in a day and age where we got to watch the reporting. Okay. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to say anything. <laughs> Hey, look, look, all I, all I do know is that from what I have heard, that there yes. is mutual interest there. And once Masai is out of his contract, I do believe that there will, there might be a meeting or two that takes place. You never know. I mean, I know, I know his, 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 his girl went to a, 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 a DM, a DMV, Rose, high, Eleanor DMV Rose, high school. I know. The ties, I, the ties are there. And I think yeah. even more importantly than his familial relationships with this area. Yeah, I think too. That when you look at the things that they're trying to build up with the basketball Africa League mm -hmm. and the, all the all this all this stuff that they're trying to do internationally, it will be a lot easier for him to do business in Washington D.C. than it is for him to do business in Toronto. They couldn't yeah. even play in Toronto this mm -hmm. past year because yeah, of terrible. how hard it is for visas and all that other stuff. Like it's just it would just be easier for him to do all that stuff that he wants to do in D.C. Yeah. than it would be in Canada. Yeah, sound, like you stump, sound like you stump it, but you know, we already know you're impartial, baby. Uh, Troy, some people feel like Tommy Shepard is an extension of Ernie Grunfeld. I don't necessarily feel that way, but with this move now, Scott Brooks, gone. Can we now put the, the Ernie Grunfeld era to rest for good? Because I feel like that was the last part of Ernie Grunfeld's spirit that was looming over this Wizards franchise. What you think? 
I mean, that was that was that was his <laughs> own big hire. Like, yeah, yeah. Nah, you could there you gonna put a kibosh on that. Like, the <laughs> era is officially over, and Tommy Shepard's not earning. Like, Tommy has mm-hmm. already proven that he's willing to take chances. That he's willing, even even when you know I personally didn't like some of the chances that he took. I didn't like him trading John Wall away for Russell Westbrook. Obviously, <laughs> looking back on it now, he made mm-hmm. the right call. Like, yeah. you know. He made the right call. Made the right mm-hmm. call. Made oh, the right call. snap. We yeah, got yeah. to get Felix on board now. And we yeah, he made the right call. Russell Westbrook, <laughs> Russell, Westbrook, Russell, Westbrook, Russell Westbrook brought a dynamic that the Wizards organization <laughs> has not had. But Tommy, Tommy, he's not he's not earning, man. Tommy is his own man. Yeah. Tommy, number one, he is, he is accessible to media members. Like, I text Tommy on a regular basis like, talking about what I'm listening to from the hip hop. Like, oh, dope. Like, okay. Like, he, he's just way more accessible. Um, he's way more forward thinking than mm-hmm. I believe that Ernie Grunfeld ever was. And so, yeah, he's taking a lot of risks and some of them have paid off and some of them haven't. But at the end of the day, this isn't the same old Wizards uh, line of thinking. Oh, no, absolutely yeah. not. I love Rui, as, as mm-hmm. you know. Go ahead, Wally. I know, yeah, I love Rui too. But see, my uh, for the next coach, because to me, it's, just, it's, it's, it's all prevalent. It's all, pre- it's all based on Brad, right? Because you just want to make sure you show, you're showing Brad that this team is ready to win. And also it's still in line of what he wants to do in the league in terms of uplifting himself in terms of one of the top five players in this league. So is, I wonder like, like how thorough of a process will it be? Will you like to weigh the situation out is, is he, are you going to get somebody favorable for Brad just for Brad or somebody who you think can get you to the next level? And it may not be on the same side of what Brad may want to want to run offensively. Does that play? Will that could that play a part? Um, well, I think that it would be it would be conducive for the team to try to yeah. get them, try to get personnel that mm-hmm. around Brad and what gotcha. Brad's skill set is and what Brad likes to do. And so when you look at like the team, when you have Brad, when you look at Brad's three point shooting numbers and how they have uh, declined over the uh-huh. years, it's because they're asking him to do a lot as far as ball handling, yeah. but it's also because they aren't spacing the floor properly for him to be able to do the things that he's capable of doing. Mm-hmm. So this team needs more shooting around. And I think that they, they, they need to, they need to have, they need to have a rim running big, like a Daniel Gaffer, which they added. That mm-hmm. makes sense in order to open up the floor to, that gives them that vertical threat that Brad mm-hmm. can do some things. They need another three point shooter. That's not just Davis Bertans. <laughs> oh, I agree. I, I agree oh, with man. that. Well, yeah, I also, also think that coaching. Time, that's it. Yeah, and I also think that coaching did play a part in that. Like, I feel like there are guys. They have guys, certain guys that you mentioned, Gafford. That is perfect in today's in today's uh, NBA it's terms. Of day. Minutes a night. Exactly. So, and that could have helped things out in terms of what they in terms of spacing. I think um, you know everybody's writ have has written off Denny, but I think he's still young. We don't know what he can be. Um, also, we talk about. Uh, Rui, um, you're using Rui incorrectly. I mean, like he's a real shooter and he's not really a shooter. So it's just a lot of things that they're going to have to, I feel like they had to get the proper coach in here to kind of to see what type of ingredients and how they have and how it really works. You know what I'm saying? Well, I think they need to get a coach in who's able to uh, mm. reach Brad and Russ and allow them to be able to share the basketball. There you go. Because you already said it for me. <laughs> Brad and Russ, when I mean, their usage rates me. are both above 30%. Said it for me. Who, who's getting Rui? Really, he can show you some things, but he got to touch the ball. You like, to, there you go. So you know, <laughs> I, think, I think when you when you don't have Scott Brooks connected to Russell Westbrook anymore, I think that we need whatever they need to do, they need to find somebody who can come in and help transform uh, Russell Westbrook's game because he's clearly shown that he's got something left in the tank mm-hmm. and I think that you know we need to be looking at like you know Jason Kidd his transition not as far as him coaching I'm talking yeah, about, yeah, his, I talking about. his style of play when mm-hmm. he went to the Dallas Mavericks he transformed the way he played and he and 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 it worked and it was conducive for championship style basketball and I think that Russell Westbrook has a stage like that in his career if he gets the right coach around him who can bring that out of him Yo, Tommy Shepard said Ted will be a lot. Will, will be willing to allow him to go into the luxury tax. Some names have been thrown out there because personnel is going to be key. You know, we 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 made this move, or the Wizards made this move, getting Scott Brooks out of there. Now you got to have the right personnel. I, I heard some Quinn Cook rumors yesterday. I don't know if you can confirm that. And then guys like John Collins is who I like. Um, 
DeMar DeRozan, these names have been thrown out there as, as potential, you know, big name threes, two-way players that you can bring in. What do you think is the next move personnel-wise? Then we're going to let you get out of here. I don't know if we got Twitter comments or not, but I think we did, though, right? No, well, no, no we, we don't think we have any. No, we don't have any. Good. Yeah, so I look, the DeMar DeRozan stuff, I don't I don't see it. I don't see yeah. it at all. <laughs> he, he doesn't, it doesn't, putting DeMar Rosen, putting DeRozan next to Westbrook, it just doesn't make any sense. How are you going to space the floor? Yeah, um, and also, he he's a he's a free agent. We don't even have salary cap space to to sign him. So mm-hmm. I, I, that that just doesn't make sense to me. Um, mm-hmm. The name out there that does make a little bit of sense, um, if you want to take a big swing, is Kristaps Porzingis, um, who is another uh, Latvian player. You know how they love their international players. <laughs> Latvian night, Latvian uh, heritage night would go crazy. <laughs> 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 at the end of the day, I, I just I think that taking a gamble on a player who's only played 100 games over the last two seasons, it, that would be just a major gamble that they can't afford to make at this point. And so, you know, I do believe that, uh, you know, there, I mean, there are some names out there, but we don't know if they're available. Depends on what happens with this Clippers season. You know, Paul George might be available this summer. He just signed an extension. So, uh-huh. you know, and look, they, there's enough contracts that they can get up to that Paul George number. So, you know, but that, like I said, there's no no reporting here. I'm just spitballing. You spit, you spit, yeah, I know you're spitting right now, bro. You're spitting. For the it's aggregators the, out there. But um, like, I, I, you, you, you named like, so how about uh, Powell from Portland or or, or even who he got traded for? Um, Gary, Gary, Gary Trent. Trent. Well, Gary, Trent. Gary, Gary Trent. Gary Trent is going to be a restricted free agent coming up this summer. Mm-hmm. And so he's going to receive, I, I look. That might be a situation where you might, if you're the Wizards, might could throw him a lucrative offer sheet and mm-hmm. you know, hope that the uh, the Raptors don't match it. Mm-hmm. Or uh, Powell, I like Powell as a scorer. I don't know if I'm willing to pay Powell 17 to 20 million dollars a year. Mm-hmm. Like 12, a- yeah, come on, let's go. But yeah, yeah anything more than that, I think you kind of he kind of loses his value a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I I mean really, I think that they they just need. They need that 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 cheap that Jay Crowder type. They need that dude mm. on that. You know what I'm saying? They need, yeah, but, they need a dog. They need a dog. Like, don't come here. Like yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, Jay Crowder don't. ain't taking seven million dollars to come play for the Wizards. He he want to go play for championships. But that's the type of guy they need. A guy who's really three and D, who mm. can actually hit shots and play defense and knows his role. You know, mm. a guy who who he's not coming out here thinking I'm about to score 25 points a game. Mm. Like you know, it, it, Jay Crowder is perfect next to Devin Booker and Chris Paul because he knows what he's there for. So they need to go out and find they need to go out and find the next Jay Crowder. You know, they had they, a reason. And those he was guys similar. are around the league. He had a reason. A reason's very similar, and a reason yeah, has good yeah, years here. Now he reason like 37 now. So <laughs> I know, <yeah. laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, you gotta find the next Trevor Ariza. That's the thing. You gotta you gotta look into your scout. And I think that Tommy did a very good job of looking at a guy like Daniel Gafford, who uh, you know, I don't think a lot of people knew a lot about him, but everybody in the NBA know about him now because uh, they gotta <laughs> find the next DeAndre Jordan, and that's Daniel Gafford. You know that yeah. dude play above the rim, blocking shots. So that was if they can do something like that with the wing position, then I think this team will be well on their way. Mm, definitely, definitely got me thinking. Yeah, sure have. Sure does. Too, right? They they think man. They, just, everything's going right now. Hey, Troy, man, thanks for being on. Before we let you go, hey, when when's the uh Scott Brooks article going, article going to drop, man? When is you know, that going to drop? Dropping this Friday. I knew it. <laughs> look, 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 hey, look, I got to spend the next day, uh, the rest of the rest of my day, actually contacting my sources, trying to figure mm-hmm. out what happened, reaching mm-hmm. out to people within the organization, and, and, and get their opinions as to what they think happened and try to piece together an entire story yeah, of, of what what happened over uh, the, this last two weeks and also kind of going back and down memory lane and looking at the entirety of Scott Brooks' five-year tenure as the Wizards mm. head coach. Mm. That's dope, man. That's dope. And so how can folks catch you on social media, my man? They can catch me on social media always at Troy Halliburton. That's T-R-O-Y-H-A-L-I-B-U-R. Um, they can find in my work. I have my link to my work uh, at the Washington City paper in my social media bio. Uh, you can go back and look at uh, a lot of the different things that I've written. I actually wrote an article uh, right when the season ended after Tommy uh, saw that. Shepard's uh, end of season press conference where he talked about uh, how tough of a decision this was going to be for him. And I kind of laid out some facts for him, some breadcrumbs. And uh, what do you know, two weeks later, those breadcrumbs turned into a loaf. So. Sure, yeah. I saw it, man. It's dope, man. Definitely dope, man. We'll have, we, we're going to have to have you back on eventually, eventually man, when they do uh, hire their coach. 
when they hired their coach. When they hired their coach. <laughs> Look out for that. Also, uh, I, I will be out at NBA Summer League this summer, too. So, look, we might have to Ooh, do- okay. <laughs> That's Vegas. Vegas? Vegas, Vegas yep, yep. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seven. Let's go. Let's get it. Hey, hey, hey Troy, appreciate you being on the show, my man. Thank you. Everything. Well, no right now, I appreciate my brothers for having me, man. Mm-hmm. Love everything that you all do, man. Keep out here grinding and keep building. You know, my man. Hey, appreciate everybody for listening. You've been listening to the Urban Sports saying for ages. You dig? Deuces. A mega. Did this out, big homie.